Hi everyone, Scott Gerlach from Stackhawk here. Uh, happy to be at this OWASP conference today. Today we're talking about three reasons developers struggle with AppSec and, and how to make that easier. Uh, as I said, I'm Scott Gerlach, the CSO and co-founder at Stackhawk. Uh, got a lot of experience doing this the wrong way. Hopefully I can help give you some education on a better way to do it. Let's start with an overview of AppSec. AppSec is good in theory. There's tools like static code analysis, uh, dynamic code analysis, RASP, IAST, WAF, all these things build a really robust application security program. But there's some problems with some of these things as well. Uh, static code analysis is sometimes noisy and often lacks context of how the application is running uh, it's, and it's language dependent. So if you're writing in, in like a Go language or something similar to that, there's very few tools out there that actually provide value to dynamic code analysis, better at actual app context, uh, but still somewhat noisy. And also a ton of those tools are really hard to use. Uh, and then RASP and IAST and WAF, those are basically wait till someone else finds it uh, in production, I guess, maybe. Um, not to say that they're bad, but they're not the only thing and or the first thing you should probably deploy in your AppSec journey. So let's start talking about some of these problems. Problem one, the benevolent security team or lack thereof. Uh, some, some organizations don't even have a security team. I'm assuming most people that are in attendance at this OWASP conference are on a security team, uh, but maybe looking forward to how, to how to grow that. Uh, we have a lot of trust issues as, a security, as security organizations. Uh, this is a tweet that Charlie Miller actually sent out in February, right before uh, coronavirus hit us pretty hard. Um, and I, I love this tweet because he kind of sums up this whole trust issue thing that we have as security, uh, security teams. He said, I'm not sure if a new hire dev is in position to evaluate risk for a feature, product, or a company. I think professional security people can do this better. Uh, and it, like I said, it just sums up the entire thing. And, and the whole point is, uh, new hire dev got hired to make risk decisions. They make risk decisions on how to write code and they make risk decisions on how to deploy code. And PS, they work with their peers to figure out what risk is good and what risk is bad. And so there, this is already happening, whether or not the security team knows about it. Uh, and so it kind of, like I said, it just embodies this whole trust thing that we've got going on. And I like to think of it more like this. Uh, I wouldn't want to put a new hire developer in the position of making an uninformed risk decision. Again, when they are making risk decisions, they're collaborating with their peer groups. They're saying, hey, other engineers that have been here for a while, and even if they've been there for a while, hey, peer peers, other developers, engineers, what's, the, what's a smart way to do this? I've been working on this thing and I've got some ideas, but how do I actually do this? And what doesn't happen is they don't go off and grab the security team and go, hey, how should I do this? Because the answer is often, no, you shouldn't do that. And that's just not the right answer. Uh, so that, that's one of the hard things. And then um, to bat this, to combat this uh, trust issue, oftentimes security teams come up with this great new idea. We should teach them how to do our job. Uh, and and by, by that we say, let's teach them AppSec so that they're really good at AppSec because we're really good at AppSec. And so that will probably fix the problem. Uh, and that, what that really turns into is, here's a ton of new acronyms to learn. Uh, we should talk about how risk works. Uh, PS, the internet is a bad place. I don't know if you knew that or not, uh, if you have any. Uh, and then ultimately, if you've sent any of your devs to a security training, if you already have a security program and you've implemented security training, if you've sent any of your developers to a security program, think about who usually gets selected. Is usually the senior engineers and they're expected to come back and train the rest of the engineers on how to do application security because you can't send the entire engineering team. And it just doesn't happen because they're out learning stuff outside of context of code that they write, outside of context of uh, applications that they're building. And they don't have time while they're shipping features and fixing bugs to go teach juniors or other peers how to be application security specialists. That's why we have that job. It should be a consulting role. And the trick here is how do we get into this consulting role? 
And how do we not do it the wrong way? Uh, and so this kind of let's teach them AppSec is at best misguided and at worst, it continues to drive division between uh, devs and security teams because what you're really saying is you don't know how to do your job, but we can teach you how to do our job, which is silly. And if you think about it in context of uh, what the executive team asks from the fp &A team or the accounting team, hey, we need to figure out what the business would look like if we modeled out a new price increase. And so the fp &A team doesn't turn around and go, yeah, we could totally help you there. But uh, first, let's teach you about the GL. So it's a debits and credit system and you put the money and like that doesn't happen. They just provide tools for the executive team to go, hey man, tweak tweak these inputs, tweak these outputs and you can make the smart decisions because we've built this giant model that helps inform you of the question that you have to ask. Uh, and so figuring out how to be better consultants uh, as application security teams is super important to the engineering team so that they can self-serve some of their questions. Is the code that I'm writing safe? How do I, how should I be thinking about risk? What things should I be fixing? Those kinds of things. Engaging them in a partnership is really important. One of the other problems that we have as security folk, uh, and this always, this always hurts my soul, is this chase to perfection. Uh, we always think of eliminating of all risk. Uh, patch all the things, don't do anything in the cloud, those kind of large branded statements. Uh, and so we, we come up with like, hey, I found all of these issues, we should fix every single one of them. If patching isn't 100%, then it's 0%. We, we, we struggle to think of risk in the context of the business. Business is there to take risk and provide solutions to a customer even thinking you can solve a problem for a customer is a risk itself. So we need to be providing as security teams measured informed risk to operate and security is no different, right? The business is taking those measured and informed risks. Security should be feeding into that, helping the business say, we should maybe be taking this risk. And one of the embodied statements here uh, that I have from a product VP, which I'm looking at my slides right now and I've repeated on the next slide for some reason uh, is I've never had a satisfying conversation on why a security issue is ever more important than a feature ever. And it, like, if that doesn't summarize what a bad job we're kind of doing, like this is one, that's one person, right? There may be examples of this working really, really well uh, in other businesses and in other contexts. But if that doesn't embody like it's a problem, it could get hacked. If that doesn't embody the uh, the guidance that we're getting and, and how we're doing it incorrectly, I don't know what does. Uh, and that's all if you have a security team. If you don't have a security team, uh, you're the CTO or the VP of engineering uh, and you've been tasked with security, you're kind of a smaller company, smaller org. That can lead to any one of those, these thought statements right here. Where do I start? Oh my God. Forget this, I've got other things to do that are more actionable and more important. And wait a minute, maybe that DevOps team can help me here. So those are that's kind of the security team problem that's that's feeding this AppSec problem a little bit. Problem two, AppSec tools are built for security teams. So many enterprise app, application security tools are built for large or small uh, enterprise security teams. So that means that they've got a lot of configuration, a lot of buttons, a lot of switches, a lot of, a lot of cool whiz bang features. But what that often ends up looking like in actuality is something like this. They're really complicated, hard to understand the context of what you're looking at. And if you try to give an engineer access to a tool that looked like this, I mean, not that these guys aren't engineers, but you know, they're specialized in this thing. Um, they close it pretty quick, right? They'd go, uh, this is too much for me to learn. I've got stuff to do. Or they'd start making fun of how it was developed. Uh, neither of those things is what you want them to be doing. You want them to be able to use the tool, consume the information and make that really, really good. Make good decisions based on it. The other problem here is security websters. We, uh, 
they're all built in security person language. We, uh, a developer's job is not to learn all this new stuff, but they have to know how to protect against it or prevent it. Um, and both of these things on this slide here, many of you may know, are the same thing. CSRF, XSRF. A developer would look at that and go, why are there two names for the same thing? This is ridiculous. Um, and really, ultimately here is this is misconfiguration of access control allow origin. And neither of these things say that. Uh, so it's really hard to go, okay, cool. You found a cross-site request forgery problem on this application I built. How do I actually fix it? Uh, and so then the Googling begins. And it's not that they can't find the answer to it because they can, it's that they don't have time to do that. They're busy working on other stuff. This is not their specific job. They just need to fix bugs and go about their business. There are good AppSec dev tools out there, stuff that's developer native in the context of how they work, in their workflow, self-serving, um, self-service, uh, helping them produce secure, safe code. Uh, some of those tools are Sneak, Fossa, NPM Audit, uh, GitHub's Package Inspection and PR Bot, Dependabot, uh, the OWASP the Dependency Checker tool, um, and at least one other one that I know about that comes from the company I, I come from. Anyway, uh, last of all, all these kind of application security tools um, all suffer from this last problem for the most part. And that is problem three, the production bias. All these things are set up so that they can easily run in production. And there's a bunch of problems with that. So let's dig into that. First of all, production bias, um, the first problem in there is the people. So the security team is usually one of the ones that enter and uh, edit. The yeah, sorry. The security team is usually one of the ones that first experiences a, one of these AppSec tools. And the first place they run the tool is in production because that's where they know the application the best. They always end up going, okay, I need to be able to run this in production. And that's where we've put a ton of, uh, ton of technology in there to make the user experience really good and the bot experience really bad. And then we always have a problem as security people going, you know what, this has to be able to defeat all of my bot protections so that it can scan my production environment, which is the, the silliest thing. Uh, I've done this myself and it's just a silly way to think because you're like, okay, all of this anti-bot stuff that I put in place should be defeatable by this bot that I'm gonna to use to scan production. Uh, and then the other person that this uh, production bias serves is the pen tester. And the pen tester production is their only access to the app. So that's the only place they know the app. Uh, and what, what the repercussions that come out of this kind of production bias for people is you're more focused on the numbers of things found than finding and fixing the right things. So pen testers, uh, their value is in how many things did you find? The security team's value in the tool that they bought is in how many things did it find? Uh, and not, did I find and can I fix the right things? Uh, it's inefficient because neither of these two teams in most cases uh, are the fixers of any of these problems. And then it reinforces that adversarial relationship that we talked about of, Hey, look, I broke your cool thing. Isn't that awesome? And you should be proud as secure, as an AppSec professional of finding things that are hard to find, S security problems that are tricky to, to either discover or exploit or whatever. But that, again, is not the value of the developer. They're thinking about delivering value to the customer. So um, undoing that uh, adversarial relationship is super important. There's also a timing issue associated with this production bias. And as companies are rapidly shipping code to production, security is not baked into this workflow. And um, either you're not rapidly shipping, in which case uh, AppSec processes act as a blocker. So that first one there, that, that top one, or if you're scanning in production after something gets deployed, then you're playing catch up. 
Uh, and so you're unaware of things that are getting put into production. Or in that first one, you're saying, don't, don't deploy anything to production until I check it. And so neither of those things are super DevOps friendly. Um, and then AppSec tools that are run in production after release are used infrequently, infrequently um, you know, some, some duration after release. So, you know, you've put, you potentially put security bugs into production that you're unaware of uh, in a hope to unblock the, the development team. But now you've undone a bunch of what you're trying to do in the first place, and that's an AppSec program. Uh, I did see a, a cool Mobius of this thing the other day that had security wrapped around this entire Mobius. And that's fine, except for that's also not how it works. Like the operations of a, of a product is also around the entire Mobius. The deployment of a product, the architecture, the planning of a product could also be around the entire Mobius, but it's just more of the flow of where, how, how this Mobius works and uh, coming up with a new design of the Mobius that says it's all the way around this whole thing also doesn't help because <laughs> that doesn't give you insight into where it should end up. Ultimately, uh, there's a major problem with AppSec tools that favor running in production. And that again is the bugs are in production. So this process is super frustrating for software engineers. The security team is running those infrequent scans of code that are already in production engage in a bunch of ticket shuffling to find the engineering team that wrote or can otherwise fix that issue in code. The team has moved on to other engineering work that has business value and they have conflicting priorities. Often security tickets lack the concept of business context as to why they're important to fix over current sprint work. The team, the team has probably long moved on to other engineering work that creates business value and they, they have conflicting priorities. And often security tickets lack the concept of business context as to why they're important to fix over current sprint work. There may be a lot of times that will intentionally ship security bugs to production, but the intentionality is the important things. You should be doing that with your eyes wide open. You should know that you're intentionally going, I know about this security bug, we have to deliver this feature, but we'll come back to the security bug after we've delivered the feature. You might know that the exposure is limited in that situation, it'll be fixed in the next sprint, uh, but production should not be the first place you're checking if there are any security bugs. Another problem with the production bias is context. Um, checking for security bugs in production is inefficient. Engineers have moved on to other tasks uh, and doing this involves heavy context switching, something that they wrote two weeks, a month, three months ago, requires heavy context switch to get back into that code. It, scanning uh, on www or on app um, in production makes it difficult to identify the app or service affected. So many of those, many of those apps and services are microservices backed. Uh, they appear to be one thing to a customer, but they're little bits of services all over the place. Um, and then that, that leads to that ticket shuffle again. Um, and then of course, you've got the business risk. What is the actual risk of the app to the business? How important is it to the business? What kind of data does it handle? Those kinds of things. Those are often some of the first questions you ask as an AppSec person. Hey, what does this thing even do? How important is it to us? And being able to know that up front and know it before you start deploying to fix or deploying to production is critical to being able to get business context as to why you should be or should not be fixing things. And you can think about that as, should we be fixing all of the bugs on an internal application or going fast on something else or going fast on an internal application? Uh, and then, you can think of the, the other thing you can think of is how should we think about our apps and the data they handle? Like what is, what it really is the importance of a of a piece of technology to the business? Is it critical to serving customers? Is it critical to onboarding customers? Is it critical to uh, the operation of the business? All these things go into how important is this? So really what we have here 
is the wrong team doing stuff at the wrong time in the wrong context. You've got the security team who often can't fix problems, scanning and production when bugs are already there in the wrong context of how important is this thing to us. We know about the URL or the host or whatever it is that exists on the internet that's exposed to the public or exposed to customers with sign-ins, those kinds of things. But we don't know why it's important or the microservices that are behind all of those applications that support and make it work the way that it works. Uh, and so understanding that context, uh, being able to have the team that develops those microservices scan code, understand uh, security risks, security bugs while they're developing code, while they're merging code uh, is super, super important. So how to get started uh, the right way. Uh, there's, some, there's an interesting thing you can think about when you're, when you're trying to implement an AppSec program and you're thinking about how engineers work. And that is, that's kind of this. You know, when a team is writing code, they know the syntax is wrong when it doesn't compile or a linter tells them. And when a team merges code, they know there's a problem when it can't merge or it doesn't merge. And when a team runs unit tests, they know the code is wrong because the tests fail. If there's unit tests, hopefully there's unit tests. Uh, and when a team runs integration tests, they know the code is wrong because it doesn't work the way it's supposed to do. When you add AppSec into this process, you should be saying when a team introduces a security bug or a vulnerability, they know because it fails a security test while they're writing code, while they're merging code. And so let's talk about the, the right time. Uh, the, the right time to think about this uh, security is in that local dev and CICD process. As you're writing code, uh, obviously, there's some design that goes into this, but design is great. If you can't catch and test while you're writing code and doing CI CD, then design is design, right? The, uh, the code itself may have had one design, but in implementation, it gets changed. So being able to test while you're writing code in CI CD, uh, instrumenting those tests gives immediate feedback and the ability to test locally allows engineers to quickly iterate the fix and test loop if a new bug was identified. And it doesn't show up as this black box thing in CI that breaks their build because they can't replicate the tests locally. Uh, I hate putting those kind of black box things into, into a process that they also can't use on their local desktop because it's just that, that mysterious thing that breaks the build and the ultimate, ultimately the thing that happens is how do I turn that thing off? How do I, how do I defeat that? Um, and so being able to test local dev, CI, CD, staging, pre-prod, all of those things is super important. Uh, if you can test while you're writing code and test while you're building code, security tools should play well in those phases of development as well. Ultimately, engineers are smart. We should let them be smart. Uh, security teams tend to want to approve everything. And that, what that ultimately means is uh, other people can't make decisions. Uh, collaboration with the security team is where business context come in, comes in. Making comments about types of security checks and where they are best instrument, instrumented with context in mind. Um, as source code analysis does this well. Historically, DAST doesn't do it well, um, but it's getting better, right? There's more DAST tools out there. Um, and if you run DAST, if you can run DAST on smaller bits of code with new findings, it's more likely that the code that you've just introduced is responsible for the security bug that exists that you find. Um, allowing that technology to spark collaboration between development and security, but enable devs to do their work. Let them do their job of developing software. They care about security. They just can't know about it today because it's too hard, it's too expensive to know about it. Um, and ultimately this business risk is a collaboration. There's not a single team that knows the answer. Uh, and so it's all about talking about this stuff together in a collaboration. And you know, this is this has been a long history between security and development teams, and 
there's probably going to be a couple of therapy sessions needed just to figure this out, to get it into better, into better shape. Uh, Hey, you make me feel undervalued and unwanted when you say I can't do anything as a developer. Well, it makes me feel horrible when we push security bugs into production. Those are all great things to hash out between each other, but it should be a collaboration between an AppSec team and a development team where they're both talking to each other. They're both engaged in the problems that they're finding and solutions that go into that. Just, you just have to start. Engage an engineering team and their pipeline. Uh, be able to give them the ability to auto check on every merge. Give them visibility in their tooling, Slack, Teams, whatever they're using, how they consume data. Ask them, how do you want to consume this data? Um, give them the ability to reproduce the finding, the errors that are finding uh, and be able to self-serve that reproduction. Not, hey, go talk to this one application security guy if, if a problem pops up and he'll tell you how to reproduce it. Oh, but he's on vacation this week. Or gal, application security gal, that's fine too. Um, anyway, let them self-serve. This should all live with developers uh, and that enables you to democratize this application security information across the organization. Choose an app or service, choose a technology, software composition analysis, dynamic application security testing, get that working in a thing and then iterate on that, make it better, get that team really successful and then expand throughout the organization to make that more and more and more valuable all over the place. Ultimately, that's all I got for you. Thank you for your time uh, on this OWASP meeting. I'm super happy to be here. If you've got any questions uh, about Stackhawk or about an AppSec program, please give me a call, shoot me a tweet, send me an email, hit up stackhawk.com. Uh, be happy to have a conversation with you, just give you some insights from my experience. Uh, and I hope everyone has a great app uh, OWASP con conference.